Welcome back, it's me, Lou, and I'm here for another action figure review, and today we are going to be looking at a custom, and that custom is this guy on the right. This is my custom G.I. Joe classified series, Wild Weasel. So, for those of you that remember, Wild Weasel was a Cobra pilot, as we see right here on the left. This is my original Wild Weasel from when I was a child. Wild Weasel is a Cobra pilot, and the vehicle he came with way back in the day was the Cobra Rattler. And that was, man, that, that was one of my favorite uh, G.I. Joe toys. It was, it's such a, it was such a cool vehicle. Um, I remember when I was younger, probably in the third or fourth grade when I had it. And I remember assembling it, and it was such a cool... Um, it's such a cool jet in contrast to the the G.I. Joe, what was it, the Striker? I think that was the G.I. Joe's um, jet vehicle. Well, anyhow, Cobra had their own jet vehicle, and this was their pilot. This is Wild Weasel. He's one of the more memorable Cobra characters, and for every time they bring back um, G.I. Joe in some new form, they always find it necessary to you know give us a new Wild Weasel. And I think it's mostly because um, he's a unique character. Uh, with the exception of like you know Cobra Commander and like Destro and the Baroness, you know if you if you told me to name like you know you know five really significant Cobra you know members of Cobra, I'm not sure how fast I'd be able to you know give you that. You know I might be able to tell you you know there's Major Blood, you know there's Doctor Mindbender and the twins and stuff. But you know for me Cobra, when I always think of Cobra, I always think more so of the troops and the infantry than I think of their their actual individual hero characters. Whereas when you think of G.I. Joe, you know, there's this so many Joes you can rattle off of. Um, and I'm sure that it's like that same way with Cobra also. But, I don't know, for some reason, Wild Weasel, he's just, he's always been a very memorable f character to me. And also just a really memorable action figure. So here's the OG one from way back in the day. And uh, here is my custom. So we're going to talk a little about, you know, making this custom and what went into it. But first off, let's examine the original figure. So here we have Wild Weasel. Um, he's a pilot, so as you can see, as you can see, he's wearing um, he has a flight jumpsuit. He has a very, I mean, he's very red. I think that's one of the reasons why I liked him also as a child is that a lot of the Cobra figures I think at the time were mostly blue because they were like the troopers and stuff. But this guy really stood out because he was red. He was kind of like he was kind of like reversed. Instead of having a blue uniform with a, like a red insignia, this guy was had a full-on red jumpsuit, but he had a blue scarf that kind of like accented uh, the character. So he has his red helmet, big black visor across it. Uh, one little cool piece of clothing on him that gives him a little bit of personality. As I mentioned, he has kind of like this blue scarf tied around his neck and it's kind of tucked um, under his shirt. Under, on top of his flight suit, he has some harnesses and some belts. A couple of cargo pockets on the front of his chest. He has a silver cobra insignia on his right arm, right there. He has some uh, gloves. He, it looks like he has two belts, some pouches, a pistol with a holster. And he has these two white kind of like rectangles on his um on his on his legs now i never really knew what those were until like kind of recently so since he's a pilot those are actual like um like flight maps and maybe like notepads so if you're a pilot you're seated in your plane in the cockpit like this so uh, as he's flying you know he doesn't necessarily have especially way back in the day it's not like he had a monitor or anything so he could like review his notes or see his maps so what pilots had is that they had these like either maps or charts or a separate uh, a separate piece that was just like a notepad with maybe their notes or their flight plan and they had those strapped onto their legs so as they're flying if they needed to like refer to their notes or the map they could just look down and see the map or their notes right there so I always, thought, I always thought that was kind of cool once I learned what that was. Um, he also has a knife on his left leg. And he has black boots. 
that are covered by his jumpsuit. So when I went to uh, make this custom, one of the most important lessons I learned in trying to make sure that my custom looked like the guy it was supposed to be is that I couldn't really deviate too much. Um, especially with, with a figure like this. You know, he's very red. He has a lot of black straps. And as I was making this guy, it's like I couldn't deviate. Like if I added too much black or if I started getting carried away with some of the details, all of a sudden he'd start looking like Deadpool. And I'm like, no, I got to I gotta stay true to the original figure. I can't deviate and, you know, give him stuff that he doesn't necessarily have. You know, I got to try to keep his, his color scheme within the realm of, you know, what it is here. And if I do do any embellishments, it has to be kind of reasonable. So this is the end result. So if you look at it carefully, um, I tried to get the head, head details. It's not a one-for-one one accurate representation, but for me right now, as I've stated before with like a lot of my custom G.I. Joes, in no way, it, by no means in my head do I feel this is a perfect custom. Um, for me, this is just a simple placeholder until Hasbro gives me an official one. Uh, being very fond of this character, you know, this is a character I really wanted in six and scale. So that's why I kind of took it upon myself to, you know, make this guy right here. But it's not like, you know, this is like the end all solution. It's a, it's just a temporary fill in. But for now, I'm happy with it. It's for me a close approximation of what the character looks like. So I, I just had to make sure that I hit all the key landmarks. You know, I had to make sure that I had a helmet with a big visor. I had to make sure that he had the harnesses, the blue scarf. Um, in the maps, and the maps especially, because that really sells me on you know who this character is supposed to be, especially when you look at it visually, just to, by the color association. So for um, my wild weasel figure here, the base body is actually a Marvel Avengers Endgame Falcon figure. So if you've seen my videos before, there's actually a basic Falcon figure that I reviewed. Well, I actually had, and I ended up with two of them. Just because I used one to help me make a custom um, Captain America figure from Falcon and Winter Soldier. So that kind of left me with this spare body. So I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna, one day I'm going to do something with that body. And then lo and behold, it found its use and I used it to, um, for this wild weasel. The head up here, this is actually um, a spare Ant-Man head I had. I'm not sure where I got it from. I'm not sure if it was actually from the Marvel Legends or if it was from the basic line of um, Endgame and Infinity War figures. So this is an Ant-Man helmet. I just cut off those giant antennas that kind of stuck out from the side of his head. Uh, the, the vest here is actually a vest from um, a G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Infantry Trooper. And I made a lot of modifications to it. Um, for one, uh, I mean, in order to get the vest off of the original figure, I had to cut a slit. And I'm not sure if you can see it close enough. I had to cut a slit in the back from here to here. And that's how I removed the vest. And I actually had an additional strap here that I actually took off. So one of the best, one of the like happy accidents with take using this vest on this specific um, Falcon body is that the Falcon body, it's small enough and skinny enough that this vest... Could like completely wrap around this guy perfectly, so I was able to get the vest on and re-glue it, and it fits as snug as a glove on this body. So it was like perfect. The only um, place it wouldn't close completely is just at the belt right here, just because it gets a little bit too wide at the waist. But otherwise, this was a perfect fit. Now, in terms of the modifications of this vest, uh, for one, if you know, if you remember the Cobra Infantry Trooper. Um, You'll notice that one thing I did here is that I kind of swapped out the straps. So this strap here, this is the original strap, whereas the strap on right here, where there's three grenades, that's actually um, the chest harness or that goes around um, the G.I. Joe Classified Series Snake Eyes figure. So originally, what I intended to do with this vest was I was going to use this vest for a custom um, scrap iron figure, but I actually used another vest altogether. And um, hopefully I'll post it soon, but I do have a custom G.I. Joe Classified Series Scrap Iron. And um, originally I was going to use this vest on that figure, but I found a better vest. And, you know, if you watch that video, it'll show you what I did. So I had this extra Cobra Infantry Trooper vest, but the thing is, it's already modded. Um, 
it had straps here with three grenades and then um, I added an additional strap here just for the hell of it just to kind of to give it a little um, I don't know, make it a little bit more unique and different like maybe it's like a flight harness or something so my reasoning behind this giving him this vest even though it had grenades on it is that it would probably be more perfect if it was the original tactical vest without the grenades but since this is all I had on hand I didn't mind having the grenades because at least the color scheme would remain consistent um, my reasoning is, is that, you know, Wild Weasel, you know, if he has to put boots on the ground, if he's not in the, in the sky, at least he has some, you know, he has some firepower on him. You know, he has his pistol here and he has some grenades, you know, to get him out of a bind. So, I, I, you know, I, I'm here I am, I'm trying to be consistent with the color scheme. So I have the helmet, I have the scarf and the scarf here actually sculpted and, um, this, placed rightly slightly below his chin so I sculpted that um, he, he doesn't have this one doesn't have as many cargo pockets it just has one pouch in the front and the center and he has the original holster on this side so I figured you know at the very least it's it's a little bit different but you know we'll just say that he moved his gun from his leg up to his chest and since he had the silver Cobra insignia on his arm up here there's actually a Cobra Insignia sculpted onto the holster, and I'm like, I'll just paint that silver. So at the very least, even though it's not accurate, those details at least carry over into the new figure. Um, this guy had the two belts around his waist. This guy, he just has the one belt, and I just made sure that um, I colored everything black, just so it kind of still kind of remained with that color ratio. And since this guy has the two belts, and they split apart here, it was another happy coincidence that this additional strap that I gave it, it kind of like branched off in a similar f fashion as what we have right there. Now, once I was done with that, um, the figure it looked like it it looked kind of close to what it was supposed to look like. It wasn't until I added the maps on his legs where it, it really you know brought the figure home and it really sold the idea that this is Wild Weasel. So you know, for me, it was without. Um, I had no doubt that I had to add this detail here to this figure just to, just so I could like really drive it home that this is Wild Weasel. So I went into my computer and in Photoshop real quick I just drew up these generic kind of like um, ones on kind of like a map and maybe ones like his flight plan and I printed those out um, and it's, I just printed it on plain paper and I used PVA glue, which is about the same thing as Elmer's glue. And I just put a little dab on it, and I just glued those to his legs. So we have that. He has some additional straps here, just because I kind of felt the need to, like, balance out his legs with a little bit more black. Um, you know, he had the black holster and the black knife. You know, unfortunately, this guy didn't have that. So at the very least, it makes sense. He has all sorts of belts and harnesses on him anyways. Why not just have two more? And I threw them on his legs. And lastly, I just painted his boots black, kind of in a similar fashion as the original one. The only thing is, I didn't carry the black over all the way to, you know, all the way to the back. I, I thought it'd be just, I, and honestly, I was lazy, and I'm like, I'm just going to color the front half of it. And it just looks like a, I think it just adds a little bit more personality to it without compromising the look of the character. So yeah, that's, that's all the thought and the process that went into making this guy. Uh, by no means do I consider him perfect. You know, right now this is a placeholder. I'm really hoping that Hasbro gives us a Wild Weasel in the near future. Um, you know, he's one of my favorite Cobra characters as a kid. Uh, I, I, I don't remember too much of him in the cartoon. I mean, any specific stories. I remember he kind of had a crazy voice. But, I don't know. He, for me, he's a very um, memorable character just because of his costume and... I don't know. I mean, it's it's a very plain. It's kind of a plain uh, character design to begin with, because it's just a flight suit with harnesses. But just the little details, like his color scheme, and even just that blue that blue scarf, it just says so much about that character, and it gives it so much personality. So in the end, I really hope I was able to you know convey that with this custom. The hard thing is that you know the whole time I'm working on this figure, I keep on looking at it, and I can't help. You know, if I cover up the head, all of a sudden it reminds me of Deadpool. And then when I look at the figure without the the maps, all of a sudden he looks like the the Sith trooper from 
um, Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. So it's like you know, I couldn't win either way. So I just I just had to make sure that I kind of used this guy as a map and then that I followed him to the T. So hopefully, you know, for me this is a good placeholder. And even though it's not perfect, it's a good approximation. And I hope that you know you can look at this also and kind of see Wild Weasel in this custom figure. So yeah, um, wrapping this up. Um, as I always stay in my custom videos, if there's a character that you're very fond of, whether it be a, a character in a comic book or in a video game or in a movie or in a television show, and if they don't make that f that character in action figure form, you know why not take the challenge upon yourself and try making a custom figure. Uh, for me, it's a very rewarding experience, even if you don't have the craftsman craftsmanship skills yet. Um, it's a great uh, beginner project like you know start you know you're gonna take baby steps you know so if you've never done anything like this before you know give it a try and then just slowly work your way up uh, whether it's swapping parts out or doing a simple repaint uh, the mere act of creating your own action figure it's it's very rewarding and in some ways i it's for me i think i get a bit bigger thrill out of making a figure than just going to a store and buying one um and for example you know if there's a you know, certain version of like, for example, Wolverine or Batman that I've seen in the comic book. And if they don't make a toy of it yet, and I go out of my way to make it, it's a very rewarding experience. But if that figure eventually gets made, you know, officially, you know, there, I might still lean towards my custom one just because I've developed more, a much more personal attachment to it. Even though it might not be as, as clean or as perfect as an actual real figure you could buy like at retail. There's just something about making uh, figure or just anything for example there's just something about making something for yourself that's really special you know it's like it's like home cooking you know some people like to go out and buy a burger but there's something very gratifying about staying at home and just grilling up a burger for yourself you know it's the exact same way with action figures so even though you might be able to get some the complete package at the store you might not necessarily develop the attachment that you'd have if you made it for yourself so you know i highly encourage that if you haven't made a custom action figure you know just give it a shot you might find that you like it so once again my name is lou thank you so much for checking out this video i hope you found it insightful and informative it's kind of my mission to provide dependable daily worthwhile content uh, for people like me people who like toys and comic books and video games so if you enjoyed this content you know i'm very glad so until the meantime, um, you know, check out all my other videos, come back anytime, and I will talk to you later. Take care.